like to recognize, uh, of course, our Vice President, who's also the senior ranking Vice President of the Asian Development Bank, and a, a very good colleague who I have worked with, and also Nicholas, um, who obviously is um, in these premises. So, And we are working together more and more um, um, as a part of the UN system. It's. Um, a very good afternoon to all of you and a warm welcome to the launch of this um, publication, which is very critical this year because it's a stock taking of the uh, Millennium Development Goals, which was one can call the first generation of targeted goals. And um, uh, it's important as you embark on another generation of uh, goals uh, that you uh, define what the baseline is, and in some senses, uh, at least in the areas where MDGs uh, were performing, we are able to um, have a sense on where we stand. As you know, this publication is a joint production, and we are going more and more into partnerships. Um, so it's ESCAP, Asian Development Bank, and United Nations Development Program, and I have uh, left and right. Uh, and uh, our colleagues from both the institution, and we are hoping that this tradition would be um, followed as we go to the next uh, round of goals. Uh, I think um, uh, it is really a good report. I have to compliment our teams, uh, joint teams, because what I have been able to see, um, it has brought some additional interesting um, um, insights into what's happening in Asia Pacific region. And I say that because I was responsible for the Global Millennium Development um, Goals Report in New York when I was at the Department of Economic and Social Affairs. And it is indeed um, a challenge to put together something like that in absence of accurate data because comparability is quite a challenge. So knowing the data deficiencies, um, it's being pulled together in a decent way is, is, is really um, uh, a comforting factor as I see. Now, uh, I think, um, of course, uh, progress has helped uh, a certain level of uh, prosperity in the region. It's, there have been some impressive advances um, in a number of areas. Um, but region has made uh, slower progress in, in few other indicators. MDGs will be known for the contribution to development in the region. Uh, they will, uh, we need to, Clearly, as we move uh, forward, uh, dealing with what we call the unfinished agenda of the Millennium Development Goals, which is complemented by the, by the new agenda that is going to be juxtaposed to the unfinished agenda, as I see, we have our task quite <laughs> clear in our heads. Uh, and there are really three key areas um, to simplify matters. One is, of course, we have to build strong and robust stat statistical systems that can monitor, that can actually provide us a baseline and monitor, help us monitor the progress and also allow us to measure what we don't know today uh, how to measure. Uh, so it is, a, as I see, it is a launching pad for evidence-based policy making and ensure that no one is left behind. Of course, uh, means of implementation, which is the MDG-8, is an area which had the weakest performance uh, globally, and uh, it is important that we harness technology as we move forward. Mm, so priority will be given to identify and disseminate uh, most productive technologies. This is one of the most important lessons that we take home uh, of MDGs. And financial resources is key, there will be no uh, sustainable development without finance is what I say all the time. So uh, my colleagues here are going to uh, cover the two topics, uh, technology and finance. So I'm not going to go into that. Um, I'm just going to present you with just few highlights of what is the current situation. So as I indicated, progress has been impressive. Great success on poverty. Uh, if you measure it, $1.25 a day uh, poverty, um, uh, then poverty has indeed fallen from 53% in 1990 to about 12% in 2012. 
and number of poor have been reduced from 1.67 billion to 50, 569 million. However, the moment you move up the poverty line, uh, you'll find we have 1.4 billion people still poor in the country if you go to a dollar two a day uh, definition. The second important thing that I'd like to register, and I am not going comprehensively in this in interest of time, is that for every 100 boys in the region enrolled in primary school, the number of girls enrolled increased from 85 in 1990, uh, 1990 to about 108 in 2014. I'm very delighted, of course, because I'm a woman and I'd like to see more girls thriving. Um, and I think it's great progress. Of course, if you look at the sub-regional uh, disaggregated data, you will find some disconcerting trends out there. Even more remarkably, at the tertiary level, the number of girls enrolled in tertiary schools for every 100 boys increased from 58 in 1990 to 104 in 2014. So I'm just picking up what I, I found as the most exciting uh, positive movement. The proportion of the population using improved drinking water sources increased from 72% in 1990 to 92% in 2012. Although other MDG targets will not be met uh, in some areas, much of the progress made was nonetheless remarkable, is how I would put. Child and infant mortality rates, for instance, fell by more than half, reducing the number of preventable child deaths by millions. I'll try not to go too deep into each indicator, but really there are two slides that I wanted to share with you which did um, sound to me as would very good analytical work. This slide is representing countries with highest uh, maternal mortality rates achieved, uh, the messages that achieved largest reduction. So maternal mortality ra rate fell by, um, mortality fell by 61% in the region. What is interesting is that some of the most deprived countries have made the greatest progress. For example, in Afghanistan and Cambodia, Maternal mortality was exceptionally high. For every 100,000 live births, about 1,200 women died before. The MDG target in was to reduce these preventable deaths by 75%. So what's the outcome? Cambodia's rate now stands at about 170, which is equal to MDG target met. Afghanistan reduced the ratio to 400. The country is still considered off track as it still uh, not reduced the rate by 75% relative to 1990. But if you have some spare time, do look at these arrows. They will tell you what is happening um, uh, at each in country level because it has this uh, hidden story there about how even the most deprived have, have moved forward. Let me move to the second um, slide, which brings in something very interesting again, which was not there when we were doing the global report last year, was the accelerated progress after the introduction of MDGs. So the big question everybody asks us when we are out there, particularly in New York and uh, other places, did the MDGs make a difference? We do not have counterfactual data. So this question is, of course, difficult to answer in a comprehensive manner. One way the report examines this question is to group countries in three categories. Low starting deprivation, medium starting deprivation, and high starting deprivation. And then the report compares the average annual rate of improvement before and after the introduction of the MDGs for different country groups that I have talked about. The low, medium, and high. For most indicators, the annual rate of improvement increased after introduction of the MDGs. The graphs on the slide that you have up there actually uh, show this for two indicators. 
We couldn't do this exercise for all because of the data issues. But the two critical indicators, one is the safe drinking water. The most deprived countries accelerated progress after 2000 and did better than the other two groups. In case of poverty indicator, which is also an overwhelming driver of everything else, it fell more rapidly in the most deprived countries after the introduction of MDGs, halving not every 12 years, but every seven years. So the pace was quite good. So what do we conclude from this evidence additionally is that after introduction of MDGs, many countries, especially the most deprived ones, did in fact accelerate their rate of progress for a number of targets. Now, when I am in different uh, um, platforms, everybody talks about focus on MDG, focus on MDG. When we are trying to explain about the sustainable development, everybody says, oh, no, 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 focus on MDG's completion. And this is why they so, uh, say that, because they have seen uh, from uh, rock bottom, you can see some movement happening. And I think that's the message I'd like to leave back. Now, of course, this slide uh, talks about the unfinished business. And it has, if you actually look at the two columns out there, we have 1990 year and then we have the latest year. So you can see what is the level of deprivation against each of the indicators that we have. I'm not going to spend too much time because I'd like my colleagues to speak more than I do. <laughs> so one, I think we have bigger deficit uh, in basic sanitation. 1.7 billion people remain without access, with 1.2 billion of those living in rural areas. The proportion of underweight children in the region below age five only fell by 33%, far short of the target of 50%, affecting 75 million children thus far. Over 1.4 billion people region-wide still survive on less than dollar to a day, a point I made earlier. So I think one can go on uh, indicating to you where we have unfinished business, but I just want it to be more illustrative than comprehensive. I just want to conclude my presentation by saying nothing will get done unless we get the data and statistics right finance and technology, right? So I think these three things are very important drivers of this report. I have to say that there has been much effort has gone into the production and dissemination of statistics, data points for 39 key MDG indicators for the region nearly doubled, in particular in LDCs. So that allowed us to do analysis. Data are still insufficient. Our statistics committee, intergovernmental committee of ESCAP is very much taking charge of these issues along with the New York Statistical Commission. And clearly, we have a lot of work to do as we move uh, to 17 goals and 169 uh, targets, which is a lot. Now, what do we have to do in terms of getting the um, work done? And I will be very short on this. Of course, one is measure what is not measured. Um, second is have the baselines there. Third is uh, make sure that um, there is comparability in the data. And of course, given the proliferation of the targets that we have, that how do we really look at each of the micro um, element of it. Uh, enormous effort is going thinking about targets and indicators in New York at the Statistical Commission to which we are party to. There is also an excitement of the um, big data, th that data that is generated from the use of internet, uh, mobile phone, and electronic devices, and satellite imageries, which is playing a very important role, actually, in ESCAP, because we can now give early warning through the imagery information that we are receiving about the natural disasters. And also, currently, like in case of Nepal, we are trying to provide them satellite imagery of the damage and a 
playing a role in the damage assessment in that way. So there are lots of new opportunities that are coming in. Just by way of conclusion, the last slide, uh, what was my take home? I, because I was working globally and now I am focused here. I think to me, uh, the key is increased political commitment and will. Without that, wherever we have seen weak political commitment, we have seen less progress. Whether it is at the federal level or at the state level or subnational government level, and obviously it is getting more challenging because the state, the fiscal devolution or um, development responsibility are more and more in the, at the subnational level. So that makes our uh, job complicated. This time round, these sustainable development goals have not been imposed from top. These have been created by member states themselves. So it is very much a member state-led progress uh, um, uh, effort. And I have to say the biggest message that the sustainable development carries forward is that um, is in the Rio plus 20 that yes, you have these goals and you have these targets for future. What you have to keep in mind is the national realities, uh, circumstances, and priorities. So now there is talk uh, as we are here in the commission and the last week where we had several rounds of consultations with different uh, sector ministries that it is about the national strategies. Like we will have national strategies for sustainable development, there has to be a national strategy for development of statistics. Now within uh, that political will and getting the uh, vision right, uh, we have to spend a lot of effort and time on building national statistical capacity. Um, we have to really spend a lot of money on innovation, new technologies and innovation um, uh, is a good investment so that the official statistics producers do not fall behind other producers of the data. And last but not least, effective coordination and partnership. Of course, among the statistical bodies to learn from each other, which is what, where we come in, because they are in, our, they are in our statistical committees. But more from our perspective is that each of us uh, institution has statistical offices. I know Asian Development Bank has a very good capacity and UNDP is working at the national level um, in a very focused manner with some of the statistical offices. If we were to work together more intensively in, the, in uplifting the statistical development, we will all come out very gracefully to help our member states. So thank you for being here. And you will he hear definitely more exciting things from my colleagues because I know them. I just thought I will spend the least time here. <laughs> Thank you.